Yeah, so first thing we're gonna do is just a quick overview of what we do with a solar system. Before you even get on the roof, we're always gonna have a design for you. And within that design, we always account for multiple things. So we're gonna include shading from neighboring trees. We're gonna include neighboring houses. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is try to fill the south side with panels first, and then we're gonna to go to east-west. On this particular system, we're gonna be doing 10 panels on the south side first, and then we're gonna be doing another six on the east side and another six on the west side. And we're gonna walk you through every single step from how to lay the panels out, how to install racking, how to install optimizers, and eventually your solar panels. So the first step, once you get on the roof, once we're actually gonna be installing panels, is we're gonna mark out our layouts. So we're gonna take chalk, and we're gonna dimensionalize all of our solar panels. Uh, this particular system, we're putting on, on this south side, 10 panels. It's gonna be two rows. Each row is gonna have five panels installed in portrait. Portrait is when your panels face up and down. Landscape is when you turn them sideways. So we, on this section, we have five panels going in portrait, then another row of five panels going in portrait again. To be able to mark this out, we're gonna get the total width of each panel. So these pa particular panels are 45 inches wide and be careful with the width because different panels have different widths. Between each panel, you're gonna have about a half inch gap for your mid clamps. And so you're gonna factor in that extra spacing. So this system, five panels, 45 inches wide each panel, half inch in between, you're sitting at 227 and a half inches. So we're gonna take our measuring tape and we're gonna measure 227 and a half and get a mark. So I'm gonna take it from this end and I'm gonna carry it all the way across to that other end and make a mark there. So I always like to mark my top left corner and to be able to figure out exactly where I should have it. Like, should I have it another distance this way or should I have it a little bit further that way? I also need to know the length of the panel. So these particular panels are 82 and a half inches in length. And what we like to do to match up how far down we go and where we start our row is if we have a valley like this, we generally want to stay a foot out of the valley. So from the top of my panel, I'm going to mark out 82 and a half inches until I decide where I want to put my corner. So if I got 82 and a half inches marked out just like this, I also like to be a foot out of my valley. So you can drag this along until you're about 12 inches out of your valley. So the next step when we're doing our layout is we're gonna mark our trusses. And so a lot of people tend to be a little bit concerned about this area because it's very important and you wanna find your trusses. Um, you're generally not gonna be able to use, a lot of guys will take like a drywall scanner or a stud finder. It's not gonna go through the layers you need to find it. So we do the old classic hammer test. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up where we think the truss is and then we're gonna tap and you'll hear the different sounds. So the first sound is gonna be like this and you're slowly just gonna slide over until you hear something solid. And so there I found a solid mark, so I'm just gonna mark my truss. And so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the next one. So these might be 18 inch on center, 24 inch on center. And so you're gonna tap until you find that mark and then you're gonna mark all the tops all the way across. And then the next thing we're gonna do is mark the bottoms. So then you know where your top and bottom of your trusses are. So the next step after we've marked our layouts, we've now found all our trusses, is we wanna mark where the rail are gonna sit on the roof. So we know where we're gonna drill our holes and put our flashing. So to be able to find out where your rail is, we've already marked out the top of the panel. We like to be between 14 and 20 inches in the manufacturer's clamping zone for the panel. So if this is the top of my panel here, I'm gonna be between 14 and 20 inches. So now that we're sitting in this space, we're gonna get a little bit more detailed in that wherever you choose to put your rail can be a little bit easier or harder installing your flashing. So we like to be exactly two inches below the course of shingle that you're on, just cause it's gonna allow you to not have to cut any shingles and it just makes it a little bit easier on yourself. You can be higher, but you're just gonna need a roofer's knife and you're gonna have to cut some shingles, which just adds a little bit more time, a little more labor. So once we've marked exactly where our rail is gonna be, we always like to mark the rail on the outside of the last panel and the starting panel. So I'm gonna put my chalk line down and just snap a mark so we have a nice straight line to work with. So another thing to keep in mind when you're installing your rails is you need to know the max span they can handle. So most systems are gonna be 18 inch on center, 24 on center for your trusses. The max distance the rail can span without support in the center of it is 48 inches. So on our top row, we're gonna have our first flashings coming in on the edges and our top course, we're gonna skip over 48 inches. And then we'll go 48 inches, 48 inches all the way across. One thing to keep in mind when you do your second row to allow a balance on the system is we wanna make sure that we're going on opposite trusses of what we did on the top row. And this allows your solar panels to be supported by every single truss on the roof rather than every second truss. So we wanna stagger our bottom rows. So your first ones are gonna match up perfectly, then your bottom will be at 24 inches, but your top will go to 48 inches. 